Good morning. Uh, today we will discuss about test plan components. In the previous slides we discussed about test planning. So today we focus on test plan components. So test plan components. So the basic test plan components uh, we will take the reference from IEEE standard A29 1983 and we'll see one by one. So test plan identifier. Each test plan should have a unique identifier so that it can be associated with the specific um, project and become a part of the project history. The project history and all project related items should be stored in a project database. Organizational standards should describe the format for the test plan identifier as well as how to specify it and they should specify the versions also. So that's all about test plan identifier. Then uh, introduction. Here the test planner gives an overall description of the project. Uh, the software system being developed or maintained and the software items uh, to be tested. Uh, references to related or supporting documents should also be included. If test plans are developed as multi-level documents, then each plan must reference uh, the next higher level plan for consistency and compatibility reasons. Okay. Then, uh, item to be tested. This is a list of listing of the entities to be tested and should include names, identifiers, and version or revision number for each entity. So that when we uh, go to walk through later stages, it's very easy to understand. Uh, references to the appropriate document and the user's manual should be included. The test planner should also include items that will not be included in the test efforts. Then, future to be tested. Features may be described as distinguishing characteristics of a software component or system. Features that will that will not be tested should be identified and reason for their exclusion from tests should be included. Uh, references to test design specification for each features and each combination of features are identified. So uh, documenting uh, the entire thing is very, very important. Then approach provides a broad coverage of the issues to be addressed when testing the target software. Testing activities are described, tools and techniques necessary for the test should be included, expectation for test completeness and how the degree of completeness will be determined should be uh, described. Item, pass or fail criteria. Given a test item and a test case, the tester must have a set of criteria to decide on whether the test has been passed or failed upon execution. If failure occurs when the actual output produced by the software does not agree with what was expected under the conditions specified by the test. The scale are used to rate failures or defects with respect to their impact on the customer or user. Okay, then suspension and resumption criteria. If in the simplest of cases, testing is suspended at the end of the working day and received the following morning. Uh, the test plan should be sorry. Yeah, the test plan should also specify conditions to suspend testing based on the effects of uh, or uh, critical critical level of the failure uh, defects observed. Everything they should mention. Then uh, conditions are resuming the test after there has uh, after there has been a suspension should be specified. Okay. Uh, then test deliverables. Test cases describes the actual test inputs and expected outputs. Deliverables may also include other documents, the results from uh, testing such, such as test logs, uh, test transmitted report, test incident report, as well as a test summary report. This, these are the other test deliverables, uh, especially to support the test efforts. Okay, then uh, support code, like uh, testing tools that will be developed especially uh, for the particular project should also be described. Then testing task. Testing task means nothing but it identify all testing related tasks and their dependencies using a work breakdown structure that is WPS. Work breakdown structure is nothing but it is a uh, hierarchical or the tree-like representation of all the tasks that are required to complete a project. High-level tasks sit at the top of the hierarchical task board. Uh, leaves are detailed 
task, something called work packages that can be done by one or two people in a short time period, typically three to five days. Okay. Then the testing environment. So here the test planner describes the software and hardware needs for the testing effort. Example, emulators, telecommunication equipment, um, etc. The planner must also indicate any laboratory space containing the equipment that needs to be reserved. The planner also need to specify any special software needs such as coverage tools, databases, and test plan, uh, test data generators. Next, responsibilities. The staff who will be responsible for test-related tasks should be identified. This, this includes personnel like the developers, testers, software quality assurance staff, system analysis, sorry, system analyst, and uh, custom, uh, consumer or customer user who will be developing a test design specification and test cases, executing the test and uh, recording results, checking results, interacting with developers, developing the test harnesses, interacting with the users or customers. Then staffing and training needs. The test planner should describe the staff and the skills needed to carry out test related responsibilities. Any special training required to perform a task should be noted and it should be scheduled. Okay, uh, next, scheduling. Task duration should be established and recorded with the aid of a task networking tool. Test milestones should be established, recorded, and scheduled. Schedules for the use of staff, tool, equipment, and laboratory space should also be specified. Okay. Risk and contingencies. Every testing effort has risk associated with it. Testing software with a high degree of criticality, complexity, or high or a tight delivery deadline all impose risk that may have. Uh, negative impact on project goals. So there should be a care should taken before starting the proper test plan. These risks should be identified, evaluated in terms of their probability, probability of occurrence, prioritization, and contingency plans should be developed that can be avoided if the risk occurs. Okay. Next one is test. Testing cost. The project manager in consultation with developers and testers estimates testing cost. If the test plan is an independent document prepared by the testing group and has the cost component, the test planner will need tools and techniques to help estimate test cost. The cost that should be included in the plan are cost of planning and designing the test, cost of acquiring the hardware and software necessary for the test, cost to support the test environment, cost of executing the test, cost of recording and analyzing test results, uh, tear down cost to restore the environment. Approvals. The test plan for a specific project should be reviewed by those designated by the organization. All parties who review the plan and approve it should sign the document. Okay, so that's all about this plan for Thank you.